They'd come so close to death, their prayers are burdened with thanks. Like the boatloads of refugees that came before them, they'd survived for weeks far out to sea. By chance, they were rescued. But these emaciated boat people aren't Vietnamese. This isn't footage from the 1970s. This is happening right now in 2009. And what's even more shocking is that these refugees say they were deliberately towed out to sea and cut adrift with precious little food or water. This is the story of the Rohingya, a forgotten people. I'm Dan Rivers and I've been investigating what happened to hundreds of Rohingya refugees after they escaped persecution in Myanmar and made it to Thailand. Their treatment at the hands of the Thai military is now under close scrutiny. This forgotten people are suddenly at the centre of an international scandal. The Rohingya are a persecuted Muslim minority who come from Arakan State in the far west of Myanmar, formerly Burma. Thousands have crossed the border into neighbouring Bangladesh, where they live in huge camps. But in recent years, boatloads of Rohingya have also been trying to escape to Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia in search of a better life. But it's the reception they got in Thailand that's suddenly being questioned. And this is what sparked those questions. Photos taken by several different tourists showing dozens of Rohingya being detained on a beach in Thailand. Tourist Andrew Catton told me he was shocked by what he saw just before Christmas. Well, we motored into the bay and we saw three rows of uh, people lying down on the beach. And as we got closer, we realised that they were bound and uh, laying face down. Some of them had rolled in the sands, I suppose, as so they wouldn't get burnt by the sun. Uh, they all looked like skin and bones and you know, in a bad way. The Thai army was feeding them water and taking them down to the sea to go to the toilet. But whenever someone raised their head or sat up, they would, they'd strike them with a whip or with a necklace made of cowrie shells. And when we, uh, when we when came, everybody thought that it was completely out of control because on one end of the beach you have everybody having a, a great time snorkeling, sunbaking, exploring around, and then the other side of the beach you've got a completely different environment which was going on. Those photos were only part of the story though. There was also this video which painted a much darker picture. It showed Thai soldiers processing dozens of Rohingya on a remote Thai island. A regional newspaper, the South China Morning Post, claimed it was evidence that the Rohingya were being detained here by the hundreds and then loaded back onto their boats, towed out to sea and abandoned by Thai soldiers. Uh, the, the treatment of the, of the refugees by the, um, by the Thai military um, is obviously unconscionable and um, the, the more we found out about it, the, uh, the more confident we became in our story. So we travelled to the remote stretch of the Thai coast keen to investigate the claims. Could the Thai army really be dumping refugees at sea? We headed to the island of Koh Sai Deng. It's uninhabited, part of a national park but there was plenty of evidence that large numbers of people had been detained here. This man helped to guard the refugees for one night on the island. He says we treated them well, we gave them food and whatever they asked for. There seems a lot of evidence that a large number of Rohingya refugees were indeed camped out here at Koh Sai Deng. All around there are discarded shoes and clothes. There's uh, several campfires that look fairly fresh here, as well as food wrapping as well. But the big question is, how did the Rohingya leave? Did they leave voluntarily, or were they towed out to sea by the military? On a nearby island, we found one of the distinctive Rohingya boats abandoned on the foreshore. The Muslim Rohingya have been fleeing Myanmar in rickety boats like this for years, looking for a better life. The boat doesn't prove anything, but it adds to this uh, weight of evidence that we're slowly building up that the Rohingya were definitely here. It looks like that's their boat. Uh, we've got locals saying they were kept on the island over there uh, and that the military there, but we still haven't really been able to pin down uh, the key thing in all this, which is whether the military forced them to leave, towed them out to sea and left them to die. That's the one uh, thing that's proving very difficult to nail down. 
But as we continued to investigate, we got a breakthrough from a source who'd been involved with the army operation to tow Rohingya refugees out to open ocean. We were given this series of compelling photos taken by someone who said he'd been involved with dumping refugees at sea. They appear to show a boatload of Rohingya arriving on a beach and being processed. Some of the refugees look very young. Two military sources we spoke to on background confirmed this camp was run by Thailand's Cold War era Internal Security Operations Command, or ISOC, which the government acknowledges was in charge of handling the Rohingya. Incredibly, the photos even showed what appeared to be a boatload of refugees being towed out into the open ocean. It was evidence that the stories of the Rohingya being abandoned on the high seas were true although the source who gave us the photos insisted the military gave the refugees food and water. This was the last shot of the boat disappearing over the horizon. But I was keen to try and talk to some of the refugees firsthand. So we travelled to another island where villagers told us some Rohingya refugees had escaped and were living rough in the jungle. That night, a local army-trained village defence force took us on patrol. We hurried to a hamlet after reports they'd caught a refugee. At least one Rohingya has been caught somewhere else on the island and he's been surrounded by the villagers. So we're very anxious to get there and find out what's going on. Please, brother. And this is what we found. Villagers had caught a refugee who'd been living rough in the jungle for days. Over the next three hours, we tried to piece together his story. So, uh, all men? Dead. Dead. Really? <clears throat> He's obviously very distressed, and uh, from what the locals say, has been living uh, in the jungle. They've finally just caught him here. As you can see, he's got Night. handcuffs on now, and now he's going to be taken to the uh, Thai immigration authorities. Thailand? <laughs> but while waiting, he continued to try and communicate with us. Who? <coughs> Through a combination of broken English, sign language and drawings, he told us his name was Iqbal Hussein and he claimed he was from Bangladesh. He says he arrived on one of six refugee boats in December. He says they were towed back out to sea in January and five of the six boats sank, but his made it back to shore. No, water, no. The locals prepared to take Iqbal off the island. His testimony was compelling. But I was now worried about what would happen to him once he was out of our sight. We insisted on accompanying Iqbal to the local police station, where army ISOC officers were also waiting for him. Given the evidence we'd seen so far, we sought assurances it would be the police, not the army, who would deal with his case. Iqbal was led away to the police cells, apparently reassured that he wasn't going to be forced back out onto the ocean by the army. But we were about to hear more incredible stories from other refugees who claim they'd also been dumped at sea by the Thai military. And an admission from the Thai Prime Minister that Rohingya had indeed been abandoned at sea. But I have reason to believe that some instances of, of this happen. And if I can have the evidence as to exactly who did this, I would certainly bring them to, to, to account.